So I have a picture over here of somebody sitting on a scale. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's the Shabbat after Yom Kippur uh, leading up to Sukkot. I don't know what the name of that Shabbat is, uh, pre-Sukkot Shabbat. Or, but it's kind of a, a Shabbat of sort of like, whew, you know, God is good. Um, and then we can just rejoice in him. And, and so I just briefly share with you that one of my interests is nutrition, is just kind of exercise. And, and part of the reason for that is I myself uh, was uh, pre-pandemic. I guess that's one of the ways we chart history now, pre-pandemic post. Unfortunately, right? And hopefully we'll get, we'll get done with that at some point. But pre-pandemic, I had, uh, was growing in my weight more, more than what was healthy at that point. And uh, people, wouldn't re people never really told me, and you know, they'd always say, oh, you look nice, because people are nice, right? Nobody wants to say anything. Uh, but pictures don't lie. <laughs> people sometimes, you know, fib a little, uh, or a lot a little. But pictures don't lie, and I said, you know, this is, this is not good. And so I, you know, started working on that. And one of the, the first principles that you have to learn is that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. No matter how hard you exercise, how much running you do, weightlifting, resist, all these fancy words that are out there now that I didn't have when I was growing up. It was like lifting weights or aerobics. But now there's a ton more. And I could spend all message talking about it, but I'm not going to. But you can't, you can't out-exercise uh, a bad diet. And an example of that is it takes about 10 minutes, if you're me, 12 minutes, to burn 100 calories. Some people can do it quicker, but roughly 10 to 15 minutes to burn 100 calories. Let me tell you something. In 10 to 15 minutes, I can eat a whole lot more than 100 calories. <laughs> a whole lot more. I can do a lot of damage in 10 to 15 minutes. Um, in the same way, oh, I got to turn this on. Okay. In the same way, you can't out good deed a bad nature. You just can't. And that's, that's the core of the matter. And I briefly, I touched upon this actually, so I'm not going to go into great detail this morning on it. But you can't out, you can't out good deed, you can't outwork this endemic nature that we were born into. We were born into Adam. And, you know, you see that little baby and you go, that baby is perfect. And it's not that that baby is sinful or anything like that, but it's born into this nature that is finite and that will eventually die. And it is appointed um, each one of us to die and then the judgment. And that's, that's the, that is the result of the Adamic nature. And there's, there's a gap between the old or the Adamic nature, the sin nature, as we call it, the fallen nature, number of different terms. I believe they're all analogous, at least for this message. Sin nature, Adamic nature, fallen nature. They all fall short of the glory of God. And then there is the new nature, or really we should call it Yeshua's nature, the righteous nature. And there's a gap. And I, you know, I have a picture of somebody who looks good and everything like that, probably having a good life, but you can't get to that, to that new nature in your own strength. You just can't do it. And in the book of Romans, Paul, the Apostle Paul, or Rav Shaul, he, he lays out this really powerful picture uh, of how we go from this Adamic nature to this new nature. And if you look at the, you know, you think of the outline, Romans 1 through 3, or almost like 1 through the middle part of chapter 3 is sort of cataloging this sin nature. And then 4 and 5 show us how to get out of that nature. And then 6 through 8 teach us how to, how to live in that new nature. And then 9, 10, and 11 show us about Israel, both Israel in the new nature and the old, the remnant and national Israel. And, and thank God, praise the Lord, that at the end, um, one day when the fullness of the nations come in, all Israel will be saved. That's one of my life verses, Romans eleven twenty five. 25. I, 
I pray, you know, if you're looking for a life verse, that's a good one. Romans 11, 11 is a good one too. We'll, we'll talk about that. And then 12 through 15 is practical ways we can live out this new nature. And so if you'll turn with me to Romans chapter 1, verse 18, I first want to talk about this sin nature that we have. It says um, Romans 1.18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness or sinfulness and unrighteousness, iniquity, transgression of men or humanity who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth and in, in, who suppress the truth. By their unrighteousness, by the fact that we live in this fallen state, um, that God's wrath is upon all humanity. That not only in this Adamic nature do we have a problem that one day we're all going to die, but while we're living, we're living in a sense under God's wrath. Now, what do we mean by God's wrath? Does that mean that God is just looking around for people to punish all day long? No, it's not what it means. To be clear on that, Paul makes it clear what he means. I believe I have that up here. Yes. Now, this is one of three verses, Romans 1, 24 says, Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. He actually goes on to say in verse 26 and verse 28 that he gives up, in a sense, the body to the sinful passions, the senses, and then the mind. So for the person in the Edemic nature... Because they're living in their own strength, their own self, their own capabilities and abilities, because they're finite and led by the body, both the heart, the mind, and the body are, in some way or another, corrupt. And even if they're trying to do good deeds and trying to be righteous, at some point, they're, bringing that on, they're doing things that are ultimately apart from God, and are going to hurt other people. You know, you take the, the, the righteous person in the flesh, in the, in the Adamic nature. And I, I, I've done this. You know, they, they don't want to do this or that. Just as Paul says in Colossians, they don't drink, they don't touch, they don't do this, they don't do that. And that might be fine for them. But then they're not pleased with just that. They have to run around telling everybody else not to do that. And at some point that can, you know, maybe that, you know, maybe that now if you were in Yeshua, that might be. Something that God wants you to share with somebody. But in the flesh, it can be, come across as hurtful and harsh. Not to mention the licentious person who, in their depraved hearts, minds, and bodies, they're just out harming, hurting, doing things, or drawing others into the pleasures, quote-unquote, um, of those lifestyle choices. And so God, you know, his wrath is really to just say between now and when I believe he removes the restrainer, which is talked about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 through 6. I believe it's verse 6 specifically. His wrath is just, I'm giving you over. And you can really, that's really all he needs to do to see the consequences of the actions. It's sort of, I'm just going to let you live by cause and effect, by reaping and sowing or sowing and reaping. And this, the, just the, this, the, the, the um, what, what am I trying to say here? You know, just the, the effects of that bring so much pain and damage because we've elevated self. And then there's other selves that are greater than yourself and they punish you and it just becomes this so on and so on. And it's only through Yeshua that we have salvation. God's wrath is upon the edemic nature. Um, so just in summary, Romans 5, 9, since therefore we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. I'm sorry, I think that slide should say something different. But it's basically, this is where it says, God's Messiah, excuse me, is the one who came to free us from the edemic nature. So just as we have this edemic nature and God gives us over, he says, this is what you want, Go for it, kind of like the uh, prodigal. The father says, hey, if you want your inheritance, and go, and, and you're gone. That's sort of, in a sense, how God's wrath primarily or foundationally works. I'm not going to say every instance he's God, 
but primarily that's how it works. But he sent his Messiah to free us, to die, to make that death for us. And when we put our faith in him, we have a new nature. We enter, we, we cross that gap, like that picture, from the one nature into the new nature. He transfers us from one, from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. So God's Messiah, Yeshua, frees us from the sin nature. Romans 3.25, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show us God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he passed over the former sins. So, so specifically, as we said at Yom Kippur, Yeshua was put forward as the place, the means by which we can be broken free, redeemed, ransomed from the Adamic nature into the new or Yeshua's nature. And how do we do that? We do that by faith. God's desired response is faith. Believing in the death that he died for me, I'm appropriating his death, his merit, not my merit. That's how we live in the Adamic nature. In the new nature, we, have, we take his merit by his grace. He allows us by faith. We die with him, buried raise again, and we now are in this new nature. And that's the response. And that's really, I mean, that's the crux of the matter. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, rendered righteous. And I know sometimes we say, oh, rendered righteous means you've been pardoned. Yes, that's true. Your sins have been remitted. But by being rendered righteous, you're really being, to be rendered righteous fully and completely is to, in other words, your endemic nature can't really be made righteous. Not fully. You have to be rendered into a new, the new nature, the nature of Messiah. You've been justified by faith. Fully and completely. Your sins have been forgiven. You've been transferred from one to another. You can't just do good deeds. And so that transference, that translation, as a, as a, as a way of putting it, goes from one to another and through the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach. Romans 5.19. This kind of sums it up. For as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Adam. That's the one man. This is a summary of Romans 5. Uh, he... he Paul mentions this in verse 5.12, that sin came through Adam. And so the one man there is Adam. For by one man, by Adam's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, Yeshua, the many will be made righteous. And the righteousness, again, is not just you, Mike Cohen, you're righteous. No, it's you, Mike Cohen, have been moved into a whole new creation. A whole new creation. You're in Yeshua. And if you go back and you read your Rechad Shah and you, you look up all the times where it says in Yeshua, through Yeshua, with Yeshua, in Him, it's, it's probably close to a thousand times. And all the blessings, promises, it's really exciting. It's a powerful study. I would encourage you uh, to do that. Encourage you to do that. Um, it'll really be a blessing for you. And so how does God save us? By the blood of Yeshua, all his merit. I want to be clear on that. If you go back and look at the Yom Kippur message, and I know it was, it was a little long message, my, but, but if you go back and look at it, he did it all, even up to the affliction. You, you, don't, you know, oh, I afflicted myself. No, you're, you're afflicting yourself as a form of humility. It's a form of surrender, and it's a beautiful thing. But he did everything in the Yom Kippur, Leviticus 16 message, um, passage. So we, we just respond by faith. And that faith comes because of his grace, his merit on our behalf. And that is what does it. And, I, and you, you, 
And, and when you really see it that way, or I, you know, in my view, when you really see it that way, you just say, wow, what a savior. Wish I could think of the name of that hymn, but it says, wow, what a savior. You know, it's like amazing um, that that's, he really, and you know, again, it's, pre, it's, it's, pre, God, you know, he gave us so much when we were in the garden and we, we rejected it, our forefather. And yet he said, I, I still want you. I still love you. I have so much love for you Amen. that I'm willing to take on everything, everybody's bad nature, including Adam. He went all the way back to Adam and paid for that all the way to, to the new, to get us into this new nature. Okay. So now in culture today. And it's, I think it's important at some level to kind of know what's going on in the culture a little bit, at least in terms of your witness. Um, there's this kind of concept of the red pill, blue pill. And so just for the sake of this message, just to kind of make it clear, the, think of the blue pill as the self. You know, myself, because that's really what the Edemic nature is. It's self. That's how Adam fell. He said, I want to be like God. I, me. And the the red pill is Yeshua. His, his, Yeshua is Lord. We're born into this blue pill. And when you, by faith, take Yeshua, confess with your mouth Yeshua is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you are saved. So you, you, at some point, you make that decision. Now, again, it's by grace is always first. Doesn't matter what theological system you're in, Calvinism, Wesleyan, they all agree grace is first. Okay? So grace is first. And then the conviction through the Holy Spirit, his leading guidance, and you say, Yes, I want the new life. You're not just saying, I want a ticket to heaven. I want just Mike Cohen to be delivered from, from, from sin. You're saying, I want to go to the, to the, new, the new creation. You, you just, there's a certain understanding of that. You know, I will tell you, when I became a believer, it was more because I was miserable in this body of death than I was because I'm like, oh, I really, I, I'm a sinner. I wasn't really thinking in that very concrete, you've sinned and fallen short. I was thinking, I'm miserable. This world, I just see that there's something wrong with this world. You know, no matter how well you do, no matter what kind of accolades, no matter how many attaboys, no matter how much money you have in the bank, there's always something just, it's like Sisyphus and the grapes. There's always just something missing. And I was blessed. Uh, I didn't grow up in a, in, a, in a believing home, but I grew up in a, in a loving home, in a, a good home. And, and I, was, I was blessed in that regard, but I, I was also twice blessed in that at, when I, after I graduated college, that, that I, by God's grace, saw that. Like that uneasiness came to me, not in my own wisdom or intelligence. I just was blessed in that. And if you're here today and you're a believer in Yeshua, you, you have that same blessing. And so, I mean, I, again, please forgive me. I'm not trying to reduce Yeshua down to a red pill. I'm just kind of saying in a sense that, that you, you make this decision based on his grace and, and the workings of his spirit in you and, you, and you become a new creation. But it doesn't end there, because God, how does God transform us? How does God transform us? If you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it says, what shall we say then? So again, this is after, you know, we, we talked about the sinful person in Romans 1 through 3, roughly, and then 4, 5, how do we come to faith? How do we transfer out of this bad situation? And then now it's like, how do we be transformed? Well, it starts out with, let us learn. Let us understand. What shall we say then? You could put understand there or learn. Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin live in it? And this is the key. Do you not know that all of us, all of us, do you not know that all of us who have been immersed or baptized into Messiah Yeshua were immersed, baptized into his death? So you died, and that's, that's what we were I was talking about earlier, that, that you, you first have to understand that you died. It's like, how am I transformed? I'm not, even though I look in the mirror, and I go, that looks like the same person. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
looks like the same person I was a moment ago, but you're not. That person, that old you is gone. It's died. And it's worth it. Because again, there's nothing in this world that it can offer you that you can escape pain, misery, difficulty, whether you're a multi-billionaire or you're impoverished. There's just, there's nothing ultimately that this world has to offer that will fully and completely satisfy. And that's one of the places I think you have to come to um, in order to really be fully uh, transformed. It's only in Yeshua that we have full and complete blessing, transformation, and satisfaction. Romans 6.11 says, about our new name, says, let us accept our new life. So, it's a, so we need to learn about the new life. Do you not know that you died, that you're no longer that old person? That's the first thing. We need to know, I'm not that person. And then let us accept our new life. So let us understand the old life is gone. Let us learn, let us understand, and let us accept now that we have this new life. So you also must consider or reckon yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Messiah Yeshua. So you died, your old person, and the new person that you see in the mirror has Yeshua in him, with him, with her. You're now united through Yeshua. So I put the word accept because that word consider in some places is, it translates stand. It's like... It's like you need to accept it, or, or it could be like um, an accounting term, I should say, where you, you're kind of like reconciled in a sense, but not the exact same word. But, but you need to know, understand, accept that you have been, quote unquote, born again, dead, buried, and res. So that really is a key, very important principle. But next, he says, do not, be, do not present your members as to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. Pre pre present yourselves to God as though as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. That word present, some of your Bibles may say yield. It, it, it can really mean be available. And how do I present myself? You need to be available. And, and again, if you, the, the more you're able to do this, I believe the more you're going to be transformed and you're going to actually appropriate the spiritual life. And that means that all this worldly stuff that you're so interested and in, so entangled in, you need to just get it out of the way. Again, remember what I said? You can't outwork a bad, you can't outexercise a bad diet. If you walk in your house and you got a lot of junk food in your home, a lot of, you know pastas per se or breads or whatever i mean i don't want to get too deep into this but what, let's just keep it with junk food for now i don't want to get to be like wait what's wrong with pasta no i was gonna say uh junk food you know it's gonna really hinder your ability to see success in that area in the same way if you're walking through life and you're not available oh, i prayed the prayer i'm good and then you just kind of move on your merry way you're still going to experience a lot of difficulties and hardships because you have not made yourself available. You've not presented yourself. And you may very well become entangled in certain sins. I mean, that, I, you know, it's hard to say. It's hard for me to say. But that's, that's what I have seen in my experience. I've seen it played out. You know, people go, oh, I became a believer and it didn't work for me. Well, did you present yourself? Did you make yourself available? Did you clear your schedule? Did you have a time of, of prayer? And really, you could just, you could translate prayer as relationship. Did you spend some time with Yeshua, both in his word and talking to him? You know, there's a really powerful book, um, Practicing the Presence, and it's by a man, a, a monk um, by the name of Brother Lawrence, very in the medieval period, I believe, maybe medieval or early, early, uh, Renaissance. Okay. Early. I was going to say Renaissance. Um, thank you. Uh, and, and you know, that's, he made himself available and he rejoiced. Everything was different. He saw things through a whole new lens. It was like, you know, just scrubbing the, the floors it was a whole new lens because he was doing it for the Lord. He was talking to, to Yeshua in every situation, every facet. And, and the Lord used him mightily. I mean, he, we, we know of him today. I mean, think about it, this lowly, you know, monk. Um, so 
I'm just saying that, and that's not our motive. Oh, I want to be known 500 years from now. But the point is, is that are you available? Did you present yourself? You say, you know, Lord, I'm just, and you can just say, I'm just available. And as the Lord speaks to you, he's going to say, move this out of your environment. Take this off your schedule. And are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? Um, it's worth it, though. I'm going to keep saying it's worth it to do that. It's not a chore. Because the thing that you're holding up is so special may very well potentially could be uh, your undoing. Or it needs to be consecrated in a way that makes it. Um, or it might be fine. I mean, that might not be the thing that God wants you to move. So you have to. But again, it's about that relationship where he'll tell you. Let us keep thinking on our new life. It says in Romans 8, 5, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But, and, and you can just say in that text, the, 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 the sin nature. But those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit. Where are you setting your mind? What are you thinking about? What is driving your thought life? Now, again, I'm not here to say, oh, you had a, 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 a one minute or a 30 second or a five minute or whatever passing that was not of the Lord. I'm, not ta I'm talking about what's driving. What is your primary just, oh, I got to do this. And it's just, it's just overwhelming you. Now, again, if it's what the Lord wants, fine. But if it's not, if you're setting yourself on things of the flesh or things of the world, because you can also, uh, the flesh, the world, the fallen nature, then, again, you're going to struggle. See, we have to, these are things, you know, we do have to learn. We have to grow. That's part of, you know, when you come to faith, you're like that mustard seed. How do we water it? How do we grow it? This is a way. We, we need to be available. We need to accept the new reality. We need to be available. And we need to be thinking, what's driving your thoughts? Is it pleasing the Lord? And as you plead, you know, and if you're married with children, then yes, your thoughts need to be about your spouse and your children. But the Lord comes first, because if he doesn't, then you have fears, anxieties, worries about the people or anger, Lord forbid. Um, or you're just going to burn yourself out. You want the Lord first to then allow you to minister and serve your spouse, your children, your family, your friends, your neighbors, and minister at, at, at Adat Yeshua and for the kingdom. He, you have no idea what you're capable of, or maybe you do. I'm saying that rhetorically, maybe some of you do, but maybe you don't have any idea what you're capable of doing in the kingdom. Once you turn over uh, the reins of your life to Yeshua. Let us keep putting to death the old life. The old man. The old person. The old human in us. Yes, it's a daily on this side of eternity. Because we live in this body. So I'm getting to. We live in this body. We do have to keep putting to death. Uh, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, Messiah Yeshua, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So we want to walk according to the spirit. Walk, and if you say, well, how do you walk according to the spirit? These points I've been making, accepting your new life, being available to the new life, thinking about your, and again, new life, Yeshua's life, Yeshua in you. So when I say new life there, it's sort of a category. Yeshua's life, the new life, what Yeshua's doing in and through you, how he's growing you, encouraging you. Um, putting to death. Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Now that word die, interestingly enough, is not the primary Greek word for die, death. That's the primary Greek word for death is Thanos, which uh, I remember because, you know, I have children and we, we went and saw a Marvel movie in the... And it was really interesting. I, I can't remember really the movie all that well, but I remember the villain's name was Thanos. So I was like, wait, that's Greek for death. Anyway, so, but, but it, so, so that word means like dying. It, it can mean death, physical, but it can also mean just dying in a sense of not moving forward, like not progressing. But then he says, but if by the spirit, and again, it's by the spirit, not by the flesh. See, the, we can get all fleshly and religious. I just got to start, you know, 
beat myself with rods. You, over here, you know, I really need you to tell me how horrible I am. No, it's, it's not about that. It's about by the Spirit. Well, how do you live by the Spirit? Again, I'm hoping these points, and they're not exhaustive, I, I get that, but I'm hoping especially these points let us accept our new life. Let us know we've died to the old life. Accept the new life. Let us be available. Let us start to allow the Spirit to, to motivate our thoughts. Uh, let us um, be putting, on, putting to death the deeds of the body. The deeds of the body. You will live. Things that maybe you did 10 years ago that you ought not to be doing. But now it's 10 years later and you're not doing it anymore. Because the Holy Spirit taught you how to put to death the deeds of the body. And give him glory. Give him the glory. Because you can't overcome these things by some new book or some new quote-unquote self-help. I mean, even in the title, self-help, um, means that you're relying on yourself. Doesn't mean some of the principles in there aren't true. But it means you want to rely on the Spirit. Let us keep growing in the new life. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So the renewal of your mind. Yes, we have to be in the Word. We have to be in community. We have to... Talk about these issues. One message, this is the first time or the first time in a while, or maybe you've never heard that or you're still struggling with this. One message isn't going to change everything. To read on it, you have to pray on it, you have to chew on it, and you have to, because remember the three degradations, the heart, the body, and the mind. You and I have been delivered on this side of eternity from a heart, our heart has been made alive, our mind, as well as sort of, the, where the soul is, that's that the, the immaterial self has been has been uh, is a new is part of the new creation. But we have this this body, and so this body needs to be put under wraps, and it's it is a battleground in a sense. So we need to be renewing our mind, spirit directed renewal, so that we can then keep this body as a pleasing testimony. Because that's what people see. Our new nature has the flesh, I believe. I mean, this is the simple way to put it. To keep us humble. Yes. Keep us humble Amen. until the Lord's return. Paul says all over the place, he says that the Torah is a tutor that leads us to Messiah. Every time you slip into, I can do it in my own. I can make this transformation work. Or you think you're doing it in Yeshua's way, but then you slip or fall. You, and this again, it's a personal relationship, so you get what the Lord is saying. Have I slipped into the body, the flesh? He says here, the body of death. Um, Romans 7, 20, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Messiah Yeshua, our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind. But with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. And so again, what happened? You know, when you become a follower of Yeshua, your mind does go, wow, this is great. I want to do everything for Yeshua. But until the rapture, we still, or until death, we still have these bodies. And I believe it does help humble us and keep us on the right track. Doesn't make us too. If we didn't have these bodies and we got the new body right away, there'd be a whole lot of other implications that I don't have the time to get into. But one of them might be we could stumble into arrogance or pride. Or we could go back and be like Adam and be tempted again to fall. This way, we are preserved until either our death when we go to be with him or the rapture when we get a new body. And you know, you never know. By God's grace, we might be the final generation. That's another message, but. It could be. And so, and so that's why. And, and it is sometimes you do go, why am I still in this body? You can thank Yeshua for that. That it keeps you on the short porch. <laughs> the quick telephone call. And I always say in those moments, help me, Yeshua. Help me. 
That's a quick prayer when you don't have time to pray. And also, if you have time to pray, you can start there. Help me. And then his spirit will take you into times of prayer. Or if somebody else is struggling, you can say, help them. And then you say, bless them, Yeshua. Bless me. Bless you. Thank you. You know, help me. Bless you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Help them. These are the prayers we should be offering all the time. And hopefully it won't be as much for yourself over time. It'll be for other people. Because the Lord will be quickening you. And you'll always remember that the successes you have are because of him. How God wants to work through us. I've talked a lot about Richard Wormbrand. This morning I want to just mention quickly his wife. That's Sabina. Sabina Wormbrand. They were... um, frontline outreach workers in Romania, they served the Lord, get this, during both the World War II and the Nazis, they're Jewish believers, they served under Nazis and then the communists, imprisoned and threatened with death by both. Wow is right. Not just the communists, not just the Nazis, both. They were Outreach words from 1939, and I think he, somewhere in the 50, late 50s, 60s, they moved, uh, they got out of um, the Soviet Union uh, or the Iron Curtain after uh, his, uh, Richard and Sabina both served lengthy prison stays in, in a communist um, prison. But what's interesting about Sabina is her family was massacred, was killed, murdered by the Nazis. They, they fell to the, they, they, Victims of the Holocaust. Of course, when she heard this, she was just torn up, broken up inside, just, I mean, just devastated. Several, I don't know, I think it was within a year later, one of the men who were executioners at the camp that killed her family moved into their apartment. I was living with a believer who Richard earlier, had, Richard and Sabina earlier had brought to faith, was living with them because he just, you know, had, you know, he quartered himself there because that's what you could do at that time. Well, this, this man, one, Richard was laying in bed and he just said, you know, because he was such a loving, incredible man. He went up there and started just talking to the guy, befriending him. And then the guy told him, the guy, the murderer, um, they were drinking. So the guy, well, Richard wasn't, but the guy was drinking. And Richard, you know, the guy said, you know, I really miss the music when I was down in Ukraine. So he's like talking about this he said, so he says, you know, I can play some of that music for you. And so they went down to his apartment. He started playing the music for him. And then they started talking about God. And the guy said, God's not real. And he said, I could show you how God's real. He goes, how are you going to do that? Well, you murdered my wife's family. And I'm going to go in there and tell her that you're here. And I, I promise you, she's going to come out here and feed you and, and love on you. So he went into the room, and he didn't, at least according to this, the information I have, he didn't tell her anything, but the man who murdered your family is out in our, our living room and uh, wants to see you. She got up. That's all he said to her. She got up. Not only did she feed him, she got up and she first embraced him. I mean, this is only the Lord hugged him. The man starts crying hysterically and saying, how can I be forgiven? And she didn't say, I forgive. She said, the Lord forgave me. He can forgive you. And she was hugging him. And she actually said, I've only kissed two men in my life. One, my husband, and one who murdered my family. I mean, that's just an incredible testimony of God. I, and I sat there going, I, I couldn't do this. I don't know how she did it. And there was a moment when, he was, when Richard was playing the music that the man kind of passed out or fell asleep. And I thought to myself, he could kill him. Right now. He's in his room. He's kind of resting with his eyes closed. He looked like he was sleeping. And and he didn't. Because if he did, all it would bring is more recrimination and death for them. Probably death for them. For him and Sabina at that point. And then this whole ministry that they continue to have for the next three decades. And that still lives on today in Voice of the Martyrs would never have happened. But he didn't. It just, that's... I know that's how God wants to work. But you can't do that in your own flesh. It's impossible. It's only through God. And as my wife, Lisa, and I were watching, we said, this is only through Yeshua. (laughs) But it gave me, it was just amazing. And so Paul says, 
In our new life, we have the potential to provoke people to jealousy. It made me jealous. It re- made me wrestle. It's okay if you're wrestling with that, but it made me jealous too. I wanted to, I want to be like that. And it says, so I asked, did they stumble in order that they might fall? He's talking about Israel. By no means, rather through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. You know, I don't think making Israel jealous is just, here are all the prophecies, read them. Or saying Messiah or Yeshua was Jewish. Those are good. But I think it's like Pastor Michael shares in his testimony when he came to faith. It's seeing people who love and know God and who have changed and who have peace and who are satisfied and who God is doing things through. God is being productive through, but they're not anxious, running around, worried, angry. They're like, they have a peace. They're moving in a different direction and they're doing it for the kingdom of God. And Romans 11.31 says, the potential to reveal God's kindness. I um, just wanted to add, the new life has the potential to reveal God's love to people who need it. It says, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, just like Sabina, the mercy shown to her, they also may receive mercy. It's a it's an act. It's an amazing act of God. And that's the heart. And she even said when she was embraced, she said the heart of the gospel is forgiveness. You know, it's a uh, debt's been forgiven. You've been moved from one the full debt. Not just your sins, but your nature and the ability to overcome those things that entangle you. She when she heard about her parents, she was devastated. She was able to embrace. It's, it's incredible. And I, I want to close with this. As I, was, as I was being ministered to by Andrew and um, all of you worshiping and, and just singing with you, uh, that one song, Hosanna, there's a line, and I wrote it down. So God spoke to me while I was listening to worship. And so I want to encourage you, when we worship, God can speak to you. He said, Everything I am for kingdom's cause. Amen. That's the transformed new life. Amen. Not everything I am half for kingdom's cause. Or half of what I am for kingdom's cause. Everything I am for kingdom's cause. The more you can say that by the grace of God, by the power of his spirit, the more you can release the old what you want and give everything I am for kingdom's cause, the more you're just going to be blessed. The more God's going to do in through you, the closer the relationship. Um, and, it, and it has to be done in relationship. It has to be done. If it's done just by your, your, you know, your flesh really feels or your body, I feel really good about doing this today. You, you, you have to be careful of that because the enemy can use that to burn you out. It's a, it's a work of the Spirit. It starts with, again, knowing you've died, accepting your new life, being available, thinking, putting, growing, and then ultimately, by God's grace and mercy, we are provoking and showing His mercy. Amen. That's the new, the, uh, you know, and it's not exhaustive. Um, So this is an area where you can explore for yourself, but I pray that it would be a blessing to you in the new year as we enter into the Sukkah next week and enjoy the presence of God that you experience um, his blessing for you and that 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 moment, these moments would make it worth everything I am for kingdom's cause. Let's pray. Abba, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is good. Your word is true. Your word is just a complete blessing for all of us. And Yeshua is the word of God. So we thank you for the living word. We thank you for our Messiah. If there's anyone here who doesn't know you or is, just wants more of that transformed life that will provoke uh, people to want to know you, Um, I pray that they would either come forward after the service or they would call this week or talk to me and um, that they would just by faith believe that you died for them and rose again. Um, So we thank you, Lord.
I pray if there's anyone here who needs just special healing or ministry, I just pray you touch them in Yeshua's name. Amen.